I guess, uh, uh, depending on how, what what opinion you have on it. Well, I, I was referring to the other hot button issue uh, associated with the soccer team. So I, I, um, not, you know, not that one. Um, you know, in, in terms of what I what my thoughts about the uh, about the U.S. women's soccer team. Okay, well, I mean, you were just happy in general that the 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 U.S. women's lost. Um. <sighs> Right, you want the truth? Yeah, I kind of was, to be honest with you. Um, if, we, if we're going to open the can of worms, okay, it's open. Um, yes, I was not rooting uh, for, for them, and, and it hurt me. Um, as you know me, I'm a proud American. I was uh, I, I, I was not a fan of this team. Um, I, I, I mean, look, obviously, you know, listening, I think you know where we're going with this now. Um the, uh, the kneeling and all that and the anthem, that's a touchy subject, of course, so I'll tread lightly on this too. Now, when it comes to the professional sports, that's a whole other issue. In professional sports, that's your job. Um, you're playing in a sports league, that's one thing. I think it's completely different in the Olympic Games. Now, the Olympic Games, yeah, so you're going out there for, you know, yourself and your team, you know, to win, to succeed, but... You're going out there, you're playing for the United States of America, you're representing the United States of America, and you're competing for the United States of America in the Olympic Games. So I don't, like I said, I respect everyone's right to peacefully protest, do whatever. Um, I, I don't think it belongs in the Olympics. Um, that's my opinion. Um, I think the Olympics are, you know, you hear the word safe space uh, thrown around a lot, and I think that the United uh, the, the whole purpose of the Olympic Games is supposed to be a safe space, a politics free zone, and it always has been. That that's another reason why I I, I have uh, you know, little respect for the IOC because it always has been uh, politics free. They had very strict rules to keep politics out of sport. It's supposed to be about athletes showcasing athletic talent. Like, like, like the uh, the incident, uh, not incident. The uh, the example you brought up of the, uh, of the two guys sharing the gold, um, just just competition, sportsmanship. You're supposed to keep politics at the door. The IOC specifically this year caved the media pressure and said, you know, they relaxed those rules and they allowed all of this into the Olympics. And I and it definitely hurt the it hurt the ratings. And it definitely hurt the. The sportsmanship aspect is supposed to be about the sports. And, you know, and I think the women's soccer team, like, I think, you know, if you want to, like I said, I fully support your right to protest. Absolutely. But if you're going to protest, if you have such a problem with things going on in this country at the point where you're going to protest, maybe your protest should be not putting on a jersey that says USA and representing the United States in the Olympic Games. Maybe that should be your protest. Yeah. It's my yeah. opinion. Um, yeah, you know, that's just my opinion. I don't. I don't think it belongs in the Olympic Games, and I think they, they they took it too far. I think, and I think they made it about that. Obviously, the media didn't like the media that only shoved in your face. That and Ron Biles, and again, it took away from some of the great stories that you and I brought up. I just think it doesn't belong in the Olympics, and for that reason, yes, it. I wasn't necessarily rooting against them, but I can't say I was upset when I saw that they lost the game. So I have to uh, agree with a lot of what you said, you know, just basically, you know, the U.S., you know, just represent what it is. And then, you know, like basically you just, you know, like, you know, do what you got to do while you're there. And then when you come back home, you know, then you 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 say or do whatever else. But, you know, like if you're going there to represent the country, you should just represent the country, you know. Exactly. By all means, you know, come back home, you know, re-pick the mantle, you fight the good fight, absolutely have Fully support that 100. percent I just think you should give it a break. You want a perfect example of of, of how the Olympics transcends uh, is supposed to transcend politics. I mean, just look at 1936. Um, you know, the Nazis were in full power. Hitler was in full power. The uh, Berlin is hosting the Olympics. Hitler hosted those Olympics with one purpose in mind: to showcase the six foot. You know, blonde hair, blue eyed, white Aryan supremacy. His intention was that the you know we were going to crush everyone. And Jesse Owens, you know, 
comes in, African-American Jesse Owens, obviously, you know, world famous, comes in, wins four gold medals, shoves it in Hitler's face. Is <laughs> Aryan nation thing, you know, and there, there, they, that was it. Like that was the message right there. You know, and you know, you know, long, be- you know, the war hadn't started yet. Long before, you know, Nazi Germany started, you know, getting whooped. Uh, eventually, you can arguably say that Jesse Owens handed the Nazis their first big defeat. You know, he shoved it in Hitler's face. You know, just let let the athletics. You know, you, you, I mean, it is you know he. He just he just came in mild mannered and 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 embarrassed Hitler and and didn't you know have to do anything else except win. That's it, and that was it. That was all the politics you needed right there. All right, definitely. Uh, <laughs> Sorry for a little tangent there, but that, that no, was definitely. Uh, that, that was, uh, <laughs> definitely well said, hundred uh, percent. So, um, so we got uh, we have a couple minutes left in the show. We're gonna talk a little bit about local baseball first off. So the. Uh, the, the New York Mets, uh, for the first time since the beginning of the season, they ended up losing their grip on first place. Uh, before we get on the show right now, there's some games to be played. The Mets ended up winning before we ended up getting on air today. So uh, right now, the Phillies are 59. The, the Phillies and Braves both are 59 and 55. Uh, and the Mets are 58 and 55, a half game back out of first place. Now, the significance of this pennant race right here is – that the the NL West has the two wild card spots locked down. You know, like anything that um a- anything that comes out of the second place and anything is going to come out of the West. Uh, you know, the, the the three teams between the Giants, the Dodgers, and the um, San Francisco Giants. They are uh, sorry, the 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 Padres, the Giants, and the Dodgers. Uh, they are all. Um, just in, in a super battle for, for first place uh, in, in the NL West. And they're going to end up taking the two spots because they have pretty much like, I think it's like five or six wins on uh, even these uh, on these uh, guys over here. So uh, what is your take on the New York Mets and how the, how everything's going over there? I think on the New York Mets. Uh, well, the New York Mets are my team. They've always been my team. Uh, so I can be critical. <laughs> hey. <laughs> The Mets are the Mets. <laughs> I love the Mets, but I hate the Mets because they're the Mets. And this is just what they do. They, you know, in recent years, when they pretty much historically had a you know, a decent first half of the season, get our hopes up, and then collapse. This one's a little different because up until this year, they didn't appear like they were contenders. And this year, you know, we thought, okay, they're finally contenders. Now, like you said, the division's terrible, and, and, and there's no chance of a wild card coming out of that, that division. And, um, you know, first place is only a couple games above 500, so maybe they weren't a contender after all, but we thought they were. And, you know, and, and like you see in any sports, make the playoffs, you never know what could happen. You know, obviously, I've brought this up before. The New York Giants are a perfect example of just make the playoffs and whatever happens. You see in hockey, you know, eight seeds, seven seeds have won the Stanley Cup. So you just make the playoffs, anything can happen. Um, but, you know, so that's why this is very frustrating because we thought the Mets were actually a cond- Now, it, it's not over. Look, what happened? Something says uh, 60, 70 games to go. Clearly not out. And they are missing Jacob DeGrom. So that's, you know, that, that's huge. And we should be getting him back in uh, three weeks, I think. <laughs> but, uh, you know, th- this Mets uh, recent run, not encouraging. Um, you know, and, and you want to sum up the Mets franchise in, in one game. Um, the other night when they were down 5 nothing to the Phillies, uh, not I guess it was Saturday night, I believe. I've seen the Mets lose all sorts of ridiculous ways in my life. I've seen, uh, I've seen them lose the NLCS on a walk off walk. Uh, Kenny Rogers. Um, look, can I make this stuff up? If anybody doesn't remember that 1999 game six at, at, at Atlanta, uh, the Mets were actually down seven, nothing in that game came back to lead eight, seven. It was tied, I believe in the 10th inning. Um, Bases loaded and a 3-2 count, and all you have to do is throw a strike. That is your job. You throw a strike, and the guy hits it 600 feet in the parking lot. You know what? You did your job. 
Mets lose the NLCS. I've seen the Mets lose a game on a walk-off balk. That's balk with a B. Well, I've seen the Mets lose some like ways that Hollywood cannot even come up with. And Saturday night, while not quite as dramatic, kind of sums up the whole Mets existence. They're down 5 nothing going into the ninth uh, in Philly. They start off the ninth with back-to-back to back homers and then a single. So now you got to run around first, 5-3, no outs, nine run at the plate. Just get us, you know, just tease us to get us back into the game and then three straight outs to end it. That's just so many right there. So. <laughs> I'm happy with the last, uh, and I'm kind of on like a, a nonsensical rant here. I know that. That's due to me. And this is one of the best due to any Met fan out there. Uh, can attest to that. But again, the season's not over. Now they're only two and a half back, but uh, not an encouraging last month. Just got to turn it around. Um, they've actually been playing well the last couple days. They uh, they beat Washington uh, yesterday, and I see they took the first game of the uh, doubleheader today. Um, clearly, Washington is not what they were in the past, but you know what? This is the division we're in. Nobody's really a power out. Just, just win a game. Just doesn't matter who you play. Just, just start winning games. And uh, you know, right now they're four four in the seventh. Uh, they can win this. That's three in a row. So there you go. It's, it's so many games in baseball. You know, and with these double headers, these seven inning double headers. Um, you know, that's they could be on a three game win streak in two days. So just turn it around. That's all. You know, they can. They have the team to do it. They just, they have the, the hitting. They just need to start hitting. That's been their biggest problem. They haven't been able to hit in, 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 in such situations. Um, just don't be the Mets for once. <laughs> be the Yankees. Yeah, I'd have to say that. Once, uh, you know, when, when there's a, a deprived fan base that, you know, I've gone through a lot of, uh, a lot of losing seasons and things like that, like it's very easy to just kind of want to, you know, shy away and throw it away because, you know, like you don't want to like feel that same hurt again. And, you know, like just basically, oh, you know, same old, same old. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, in this in this in this isolated situation, I think that as far as the 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 general rules of baseball go, you know, like there's ebbs and flows in every season. And I think every even the the best teams have like these little hiccups here and there um, could be because of because of health. It could be just, you know, like just you know like hitters hit a slump and you know just you know it could be all different kind of reasons but you know there's really there's always these lull stretches that come you know the that teams have to deal with and it's all about you know overcoming and getting hot you know at the right time and things like that and i think that uh at this point you know with around 50 50 games to go like there's plenty of time for you know the the hot streaks to to start getting in there you know javi javier baez and rich hill you know like getting more comfortable in this in their surroundings and you know making it a, the big impact that they were traded for and um you know i don't think you know that the season's over by any stretch of the imagination i think it's just you know it's very easy for people to have like knee-jerk reactions but at the end of the day you know it's 162 game season i mean there's just so many different uh 10 10 game variables that um you know, like it's definitely not over for the New York Mets. I mean, they could go on like a 10 game win streak and things like that. You know, there's a lot of different things that can happen there. So uh, definitely optimis- optimistic and a bright future. And uh, we mentioned on the uh, on the show last week how, you know, it was hard for uh, Steve Cohen to get, you know, like the big ticket free agents, even though he wants to spend the big ticket money. You know, he's like, basically, here's my money. You know, let, let's, you know, let's just, just do it. You know, like, let's be like the second Dodgers right now. Um, but now they've able, they've been able to you know not be able to attract them through free agency in this in this uh, short interim, but they were able to capture them from trades you know and like hopefully you know able to be able to keep them from there and then start building from there. So you know it's, at this point it's only a matter of time until the Mets end up getting a big time winner, and it's definitely not late too late in the season to think that it could happen like right now. That, that that that's my general that's my prevailing thought on the whole uh situation there now the the Phillies have gotten really hot and um the Braves have kind of like shook off their early season struggles and you know it, it'll be exciting coming down and it basically one team has to win through you know one team has to win this because there's no wild card coming from here and um uh one correction that we've had from last uh the past shows now uh you mentioned the seven inning double header which I'm absolutely adamant about and I really hate that. And the fact that the the extra inning start uh, with a runner on second base. So those yes. COVID rules were kept. But the one COVID rule that actually made sense, which is eight teams in each league making the playoffs, they didn't keep. So it's only 
going to be the three division winners and then they'll have the two second place teams play a one a one game wild card to to find out who the second team is going to be uh for, to make the four teams of the playoffs um that is that was an unfortunate information that i ended up finding out this week so i apologize for uh the misinformation in past weeks because i thought they kept that too i mean that was the only one that made sense really <laughs> um so when you look at the uh the al east we have uh the rays that are 69 and 45 the red sox are four games back of the rays and the yankees are six games back of the rays uh as far as the wild cards goes um Oakland has a top spot out of the AL West, and then the Red Sox and Yankees and Toronto Blue Jays, who are 62 and 51. Uh, basically, the Red Sox, the Yankees, and Toronto are fighting for uh, the second place spot as well as the wild card. So conceivably, there could be uh, two two wild card teams coming from here. Maybe three out of the division. All depends on what Oakland ends up doing. Uh, but well, what do you think about what uh, the Yankees and everybody else is doing over there? It's only a matter of time for the Yankees, just like it's only a matter of time for the Mets to uh, have a mini collapse again. Like, uh, well, I'd say, I mean, the, the, the Yankees have had their issues. They have a lot of um, injury issues going up there, and, you know, it just uh, seemed like a lot of just character issues. Like they, they went from not being able to hit in the playoffs to not being able to hit in a regular season either. You know, it's just basically they, they got the homer strikeout uh, scenario going on where it's either one or the other really doesn't – not a lot of both. Uh, very sparingly do they actually have situational hitting. And, um, you know, it all it, I think um, it, it, it will all just have to come together in, like, a, a, just a, a situation where everybody's just – doing what they have to do and then you know like they end up winning games because everybody's doing you know what, what they have to do i think uh, one of the weird things is looking at the uh, lineup up and down uh you know years ago it was kind of weird you know not having like more than three or four like 300 hitters and then it was like you know if you were hitting like 280 that was kind of eh. you know like 270 was like oh man i was like the eighth and the ninth slot like nowadays i mean there's so many players hitting like 210 220 like littered throughout the lineup it's like it's actually weird if a team has like two or three hitters that are at uh, at 300 or above it's really weird though the way uh, the landscape of baseball has changed over the past couple of years yeah no, you are seeing lower numbers um you know you, you don't see the home run number i mean the, the home run numbers like you used to see and um uh, but you know, the, the answer to your last question, um, no, the Yankees putting it together was only a matter of time. Uh, I think they were, like, like you said, you, you know, even though in baseball, I think is the least chemistry based, uh, like team chemistry based sport out of out of the big four. Um, there still has to you have to. I think you use the term get, get comfortable. You still have to get comfortable there. You still have to mesh somewhat as a team. With the Yankees roster that they had, and really those trades they made last week, uh, Gallo and Rizzo, I don't know where, how they put those together, but uh, the Yankees put it together. It was only a matter of time, and um, they're you know you being a Yankee fan, obviously you can breathe. I'm sure you're breathing a lot better than you were uh, about a month ago, and uh, they're clearly one of the best teams in the league now. I don't know. You would know better than I would if they if their pitching is strong enough uh, up and down. I don't know. Um, I'm hearing that's a complaint that I'm still hearing out of uh, out of Yankee fans, but uh, they're clearly arrived uh, anyway. Matt. Well, I'd have to say I'm cautiously yeah. optimistic about them, like I am about pretty much everything else in life. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that does you. it for our show for this week. Thank you very much, Scott Blander, for stopping by. Thank you for having me. Thank <laughs> you.